Guys, welcome to another video. You got Mr. Everything English, and today we are talking about paper two, question five. Everything education, tuition for maths, English, and science. Everyone says that yes, you can pre-plan paper one, question five. But what about paper two, question five? Paper two, question five, guys, is a little bit more difficult, but there is still a way we can work around this. Paper two, question five, guys is writing a letter, writing a speech, writing an article or writing an essay. And when it comes to paper two, question five and paper one, question five, the mark scheme is exactly the same. Exactly the same. Word for word, line by line is the exact same mark scheme. So you're being marked on the same thing that you were marked in the exam for paper one. Now, what does this mean? This means, guys, that when it comes to paper one, and when it comes to paper two, you are marked upon the quality of your writing. You are marked upon your vocabulary. You are marked upon your language devices. You are marked upon your structural devices. You're marked upon your punctuation. You're marked upon your spelling. And again, you're marked upon your vocabulary. And just to kind of hammer that home a little bit more, if we go to the government, if we go to the exam board, not the government, if we go to the exam board, guys, and we look at the official marking criteria, whether we do a speech, whether we do a letter, whether we do an article, you are marked upon the quality of your vocabulary, the quality of your language devices, the quality of your structure, sentence forms and punctuation. Now, when it comes to paper two, question five, this is the structure that I recommend to all students. Should you ever require English, maths or science classes, do head over to everythingeducation.co.uk. I teach all of the English classes myself and the maths and science classes are taught by fully qualified teachers. Upon joining, you have access to the student portal where you can talk to me, submit your homework and get your feedback. So guys, should you wish to join, head over to everythingeducation.co.uk. You're aiming in total to do eight paragraphs. Now, before you fall off your chair and say, sir, eight paragraphs, eight paragraphs is too much. Hear me out. How are we structuring our eight paragraphs? We begin with the intro. Our intro is two minutes. And in our intro, we start with a fact or a question. We introduce our argument. And the purpose of the intro is that by the end of your intro, the examiner should be aware. Are you arguing for or are you arguing against? What is your stance for this question? That is what we do in our introduction. Then we move on to our first main paragraph. And in our first main paragraph is where we present our first main argument. Here we have to use vocabulary, language devices, punctuation and structure. Then we're doing a one line paragraph. One line means one line, not two and a half, not three, not five, one line. Doesn't matter how big or small your handwriting is. Then we do paragraph four and paragraph five. These are our two big paragraphs where we present our main argument two and our main argument three. We do vocabulary, we do punctuation, we do language devices, we do structure in these paragraphs. And on each main paragraph, we're spending nine minutes. So two minute intro, nine minute paragraph, main paragraph one, nine minute main paragraph two, nine minute main paragraph three. Then we do another one line paragraph. Then we do our final main paragraph. And then we do our conclusion. In our conclusion, we summarize our key arguments and we repeat the fact or question that we used at the top over here to give us cyclical structure. So even though we're doing eight paragraphs, four of them are tiny. Intro, conclusion, one line, one line. The other four are chunky. These are the ones where we present our argument. So nine times four is 36. Then you do a two minute intro, two minute conclusion, that's 40. 40 minutes is what we're spending writing in this question. And we have five minutes to plan. Now you might be wondering, sir, how in the world am I gonna plan all of that in five minutes? Because guys, we are going to pre-plan half of it right now before our GCSE begins. How? How are we gonna pre-plan? Very, very simple guys. Earlier, I went over the mark scheme. The mark scheme is about your vocabulary, 
the mark scheme is about your devices, the mark scheme is about your structure, your punctuation, and so on. That's the part that we will be pre-planning. So when it comes to our exam, guys, right here on the board is your pre-plan complete. What you see behind me is everything you need. Copy it, write it down, and let's go over it. So, as I said earlier, we begin with the intro. That's separate. This has nothing to do with the intro. Remember, in your intro, spend two minutes, present your argument, start with a fact or a question, you're good to go. However, then we do our first main paragraph. In our first main paragraph, as a minimum, we need to have two big words. For happy, use the word jubilant. For strange, use the word paradoxical. Then have a hyperbole and a metaphor for your language devices. For structure, have a one word sentence. And for punctuation, we're going to have exclamation mark and semicolon. Then we do a one line paragraph. Then we do paragraph, main paragraph number two. For your vocabulary, do indignant for angry and do morose for sad. For, vo for, for language devices, do oxymoron and juxtaposition. Then have some facts and statistics for structure. Then have a question mark and brackets for punctuation. Then we do our third main paragraph. For the word confused, use befuddled. For the word evil, use malevolent. Then use chemomorphism and personification. For chemomorphism, this is, this is when you give a human, non-human features. It's the opposite of personification. For structure, use dialogue and an expert opinion. And we're going to use speech marks for punctuation. Then we do a one-line paragraph. And then in paragraph, our main paragraph four, for the word boring, use monotonous. For the word happy, use exultant. For language devices, use zoomorphism and onomatopoeia. Have a list of four. Have a colon for punctuation. And, and, and that's it. This is my key for the one line paragraphs, and then you include a conclusion. Then you include a conclusion. So if, and you might say to me, sir, can I change it up? Of course you can. You can use your own words, your own language devices, as long as every single paragraph, main paragraph has minimum two different words, two different language devices, you can change it up to whatever you want. You wanna add pathetic fallacy, you wanna take out hyperbole, put in a simile, you do what you want, whichever plan works for you. So on the day of your exam, if you've used and memorized this off by heart, all you do on the day of your exam is you sit there, you open up the question and you simply plan the top one, two, three, four in the five minutes. Now five minutes is possible. If you are planning all of that and all of that in five minutes, good luck to you because that's a heck of a task. But if you've learned this bottom part really well and you've revised it and you've used it in past papers, then on the day of your exam, you're going to read your question. You're going to pick out your points. You're going to put them at the top. You're going to plan what you're going to say about them and you're good to go. Because you've already done the vocabulary, you've already done the language, you've already done the structure and so on. Now, guys, here's an example of a paragraph that I wrote using all of this in this. Can you guys see it? Yeah, you can. Um, look at my opening, guys. When you die, will you take your money or your good deeds with you? So I began with the question. Money, fame and even attention are all temporary. They do not last forever. However, the important, however, the impact you leave on the world, on people and on society is something which can last for eternity. That is why when you do choose your career, Ensure you think of eternity and not just the now. Lovely opening. I started with the question that I'm going to repeat at the end. The examiner knows my stance. They know what this guy is arguing. Then I move on to my first paragraph. In my first paragraph, guys, I've got hyperbole. I've got metaphor. I've got my one word sentence. I've got my punctuation and I've got my vocabulary and I present my argument. And that's it. But I was able to do this in five minutes planning time because I had pre-planned this. Now guys, look, for this question, it's impossible to pre-plan what we're gonna say. 
But I beg you, please do pre-plan this bottom part because this bottom part will allow you such a head start in your exam. And between now and June, every paper two, question five you do, use the exact same plan over and over again. So by the time you get to your GCSEs, it's easy, it's second nature because you've done it so many times before. All right, guys, use this between now and June, pre-plan 50% of question five, and on the day of your exam, the only thing you will need to do is decide what arguments you're gonna use, and that will come through the question. As always, guys, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.